there are a bunch of operators that work on a flux and return a new flux. Okay, so the first one is a filter. Okay, this is very similar to streams again. The way it works is you basically have a filter which has a predicate, right? It, det it determines true or false, okay? Yes or no for each element. You give it to this thing. Now, what this operator is going to do is going to take each item and it's going to apply that predicate to it over time. And then it is going to either allow the item or it is going to block the item, okay? So here, this is a predicate, which is a is circle predicate, okay? This returns true if the item that's taking in is a circle. And if it's not a circle, it returns false. So here, this one's a circle. So it goes through. Here's a new flux that's resulted from the application of this operator. This one goes through because this is a circle. This one, the predicate is applies, it's found to be false. So this will not have an item triggered and so on until the next circle comes. Here, this is going to pass through because the predicate is true. And then the completion event is going to result in the completion event of the new flux. Okay, so basically what we have done is we have created a new flux, which is kind of based off of the original flux, but it has a different set of items. Okay, it actually releases a new item. It, it pushes a new item when the predicate is true, like it, the corresponding value gets pushed. Or if there could be more items in the original flux, which then lesser items here because those items don't meet the predicate. Okay, does that make sense? So this is uh, this is one of the several operators we have. I'm going to show you a couple more, and then we're going to do some exercises and we're going to try it on, and it'll really it'll really hit home. Okay, so this is a filter. We have something called map. Again, similar to a, a, a collection stream map. Basically, it replaces one with something else. And get familiar with looking at the marble diagram, right? This is a marble diagram. Again, it is going to map all the circles to squares. That's a transformation. So here is a flux with all the circles with a completion event. Here is a new flux generated with just a bunch of squares, right? It's basically transformed this thing to this one, okay? This flux still exists. This flux still exists. There are basically two independent fluxes the source of this data is influenced by this flux, okay? So you can think of them as two separate fluxes. This, now, the marble diagram should should make sense. It's basically uh, very similar to, to streams. It's just about how you represent it. There's one more called take, which basically takes n numbers, n elements. Again, we've seen this in the stream, right? And you want to, you, to take a flux and you say, I want to just take the first three elements, okay? So you notice what happens here. You have three elements over here, and then you're gonna get those three elements, and then there is immediately a completion event here. You see this? This one is not, like there is this one more which could come, but it's not coming there, right? It's, it's immediately a completion event. And this one is take zero, so immediately there's a completion event, there are no elements in this flux. So when you apply take, you're going to get a new flux, with only that many values.